In an attempt to dive further into the competitive gaming scene, Glorious is out with four new mice today. First off, we have the Model O2 Pro, the Model D2 Pro, and then we have 4K slash 8K variants of both of those. And Glorious has always built themselves on a little bit more affordable mice, and so these Pro models are coming in at $100, and the 4K slash 8K variants are $130. And of course, we've been trying them out here for a little bit, so let's dive in and check them out. Hey everybody, I'm Jordan with 9to5toys, and I mean, it's no surprise that Glorious is doing this, I don't think. I mean, we've seen the second generation of some of their mice, and we've also seen pro versions of some of their mice as well. And in a recent email, the CEO even announced they were closing the Glorious Forge, which is kind of where they would start some of these kind of limited edition or special mice, and then that they were gonna be coming out with some new things very soon. And so this is what we have, these four new mice. So one interesting thing here, these pro models, they aren't a pro version of like the Model O2, but they are a second generation of the original Model O. And the reason I say that is when you look at the shape, it is basically identical to the original Model O, but they have some new updated features in the form of the new Banff 2.0 sensor, as well as some brand new optical switches. So we're gonna dive in and take an overall look at these mice. We're also gonna talk about some of my impressions, and mainly I've been using the Model D2 Pro, the 4K, 8K variant. You know that I like an ergonomic mouse. The Death Adder V3 Pro has been my favorite recently. So this is what I've spent the most time with. But first off, let's just check out the Model O2 Pro. Design-wise, the $100 Model O2 Pro looks nearly identical to the Model O Pro that was released in a limited batch in the fall of 2022. This was one that I did pick up. Instead of the honeycomb shell, which is kind of a feature of a lot of Glorious's mice, the Pros have a solid shell and they also don't have any RGB. And usually they're much lighter weight. The O2 Pro is 57 grams. The 4K edition does add two grams to it, so coming in at 59, just a quick note there. So dimension wise, it is 128 millimeters long, 61 millimeters wide in the front and 67 millimeter wide in the back and 37.5 millimeters tall. And it does have that Banff 2.0 sensor and then it has these new optical switches from Glorious. And we'll quickly take a look at the Model D2 Pro and then we'll talk about the sensor and the switches a little bit because that technology is the same between all of these mice. So the Model D2 Pro, once again, takes a lot of the same uh, hardware in here and just makes it a little bit more of an ergonomic shape. So it's not the symmetrical shape of the Model O. It has a more kind of death adder ergonomic shape where there is a higher hump here on the left and it's sloped down down to the right. And the overall dimensions are coming in at 127.4 millimeters long, 62 millimeters wide in the front, 67.7 wide in the back, and 42 and a half millimeters tall. And the base $100 version is coming in at 60 grams, while the 4K 8K edition comes in at 62 grams. And Glorious did make a you know first generation Model D Pro. I did not pick that one up. I did pick up the O Pro, you can see the uh, Golden Panda version here of that, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But I'm gonna talk about the D2 Pro, and really I'm gonna compare it a lot to the Razer Death Adder V3 Pro because it's also a lightweight ergonomic wireless mouse and one that I'm quite fond of. So this one, it has a similar height on the D2 Pro, but the ergonomic hump here is pushed a little bit further forward. So for me personally, that means that when I'm in the heat of a battle, I have a little bit of a harder time actually getting my palm to rest on there. It doesn't happen as often. So I prefer the Death Adder where that hump is kind of pulled back a little bit, it makes it a little bit easier for my hand to rest on it when I am gaming. The other gripe that I have is, you know, it's a similar height, but the side buttons over here are a little bit higher on the D2 Pro. And so for me, once again, it makes them a little bit harder to find and activate because I have to kind of change my grip up a little bit to get my thumb up there to push them. Now granted, it's usually like set to push to talk or something like that, so it's not something I have to use very frequently, but it would be nice if it was lower and a little bit easier to push for me. So those are my two comments. Uh, like I said, this is the one that I've been using the most out of all these, and so kind of have the most thoughts on how this is. So now we talked about kind of an overview and the shapes. Let's talk about some of the new hardware in here, these optical switches. Now Glorious didn't really give a whole lot of information about them, except they're saying, you know, it's their first time using 
optical switches, rated to 100 million clicks. And that's up from the 80 million clicks that we've seen in like the Model O2 wireless. And in use, these switches are okay, but I feel like we're up against some pretty stiff competition right now with the likes of Razer and Logitech with some of their most recent mice. So, you know, it's light and easy to press and there is a nice like tactile click on there. But at the same time, the overall press just feels a little bit lesser quality. I'm not sure if that's because it's just kind of hollow or there's like a little bit extra sound, a little bit extra plasticky sound in there, but it doesn't quite have the same premium feel as like the uh, Viper V3 Hyperspeed from Razer or the latest Logitech uh, Super Light 2. Now, I mean, that being said, like I said, they feel good and they're like, there's barely any wobble when you push down the button and move it back and forth. There's very minimal pre and post travel. So it seems like it's a good switch overall, but it just doesn't quite have that same kind of premium feel or sound to it as what we've seen from some other companies. And that might be because of the shape that they have on here. They're the larger buttons that kind of go along down the side here. And we've seen a lot of other mice kind of uh, going away from this shape because I guess there have been some complaints about like, you know, pinching with fingers in between the button and the side here. So most recent mice have kind of gone away from that. So it's a large plastic button and maybe that attributes to the kind of less than ideal or not so premium feel. And moving on to the sensor, the BAMF 2.0 can go up to 26K DPI. And this is the same one that we saw in the O2 wireless and the i2 wireless. And it has a max speed of 650 IPS. So really I didn't have any complaints when it came to the sensor. I felt like it tracked very well. But at the same time, compared to some of those, you know, more premium pro mice like the Razer and the Logitech, it doesn't quite have the same premium features that we've seen with those mice. For example, with the Death Adder V3 Pro and the Super Light 2, you can change the XY sensitivity with the DPI to make it a little bit more catered to like FPS games and some players do that when they are spraying an automatic weapon. And also with the Super Light 2, they have this really awesome feature where you can basically match the DPI and sensitivity of another mouse where you just like set them down next to each other and track and the Super Light 2 will set that sensitivity exactly the same as what your other mouse was. So it made switching over to a different mouse easier because sometimes DPI sensitivity can vary between different manufacturers. So while I didn't have any problems with the sensor in either of these mice, once again, at the same time, it didn't quite have the same premium feel and not as many kind of high-end features there. All right, now let's talk about the 4K, 8K experience. Now, so the Model O2 Pro and the D2 Pro, these come in at 1K polling. There's, you know, you can't go any higher than that. So for a lot of people, that's gonna be totally fine. Come in at $100. For the 4K, 8K editions, we can see in the box here, it also came with, Put it back in here the dongle so this is what actually enables that 4k polling and one note there is that 4k is the highest you can do when you are wireless and to get to 8k you have to be wired in so of course these do come with their ascended cable i believe is what they call it which i think is usually some of the best on the market very light very easy to move so it's notable that the dongle comes in with this because for 130 dollars you have everything you need to get to 4K wireless polling and 8K wired. With some of the mice from Razer, you have to purchase the polling, the high polling dongle separately, which is usually $30. 
or buy the mouse with the bundle, which is a little bit more expensive. So for $130, you're getting everything you need to get those high polling rates. Now, there has been plenty of conversation about whether higher polling rates really make a big difference when it comes to competitive gaming. And while a lot of more casual players probably won't really notice or you know, realize the benefit of that, if you are on the top tier of competitive gaming or if you want to be there or striving to be there and want the best tools for the job, typically higher polling rates do equate to a lower input latency. So all your actions feel a little bit snappier, a little bit faster. Now, sometimes in some cases, those can also be met with some, uh, some more issues than what a lower polling rate would be. There've been some cheaper, higher polling rate mice that have had some you know, quality issues and have introduced some new issues when you are using them on a system. You know, they can be a little bit more intensive for a system and can sometimes even have some connection issues. But once again, if you're looking for the best of the best, typically that performs better. And with new optical switches on here, I don't have any way to really test input latency, but it feels good. You know, I know it's just hard for me to just say, hopefully we see some third party testing here soon from other creators like Optimum Tech. All right, so now let's talk about some of my just overall in-use thoughts. Like I said, I spent most of the time with the D2 Pro 4K edition because I like the ergonomic shape and I wanted to see how that higher polling rate performance felt. Now, like I said, I purchased the Model O Pro when that first came out and I didn't cover anything about it because it really wasn't that great and it wasn't available, uh, you know, mass market. They kind of just did a limited run and had some quality issues when you shake it. You can hear there's a little bit of rattle in there. And so just didn't have a great pro experience. Um, so far, these mice, both the O2 Pro and the D2 Pro, have bo both felt a little bit more professional. I haven't had those same issues with rattling. Everything feels solid. There's no sound in there at all. So overall, the build feels pretty good. So really, I've been testing this playing the uh, new Battlefield 2042 update with their new map because it's all infantry focused. It's kind of like Operation Locker and Metro themed. So it's all indoors, very tight spaces. And so, you know, having something that's a little bit faster like this uh, has been a lot of fun to test out in that game. And for me, it's felt great. It's felt snappy and responsive. But there were a couple of issues when I had it in the wireless polling mode. So when I had the dongle sitting on my desk, I usually have you know a few other wireless devices plugged in at the exact same time too, and I had some of those other dongles and receivers sitting up there by this. And occasionally I would get a little bit of like a stutter where it didn't seem like it was getting a solid signal. And so moving some other things and unplugging some things that I wasn't using and just kind of cleaning up the space, that made that go away. And once again, you know, this wasn't like a constant issue, but like an occasional hiccup that I experienced when I was playing. But when I had it wired in and running on that 8K polling rate, everything felt great. It felt very smooth. I had no issues when I was running this mouse wired. So overall, you know, I'm glad Glorious is going this route and releasing some more pro mice. We had the O2 and we had the I2 and, you know, the honeycomb show with RGB is one thing and I'm sure some people like that and want that. But for me personally, I would choose a solid shell without RGB any day, especially when it comes in at a lighter weight. And the new upgrades on here feel good. You know, the new sensor, new switches, everything feels good on here. You know, hopefully we'll see some uh, very accurate third party tests here soon where we get some numbers as to how they compare with some of the heavy hitters like from Razer and Logitech. But my experience, these have been a lot of fun to use. So like always, you know, glorious kind of threads the needle between like premium and cost effective. You know, if you really want the highest end performance, you probably want to go with like the Viper V2 Pro or the Death Adder V3 Pro or the Super Light 2. But if you're on a tighter budget or, you know, you really like the shape of this because it is a little bit different, then you can save a little bit of money and get something a little bit more affordable that still performs well, but maybe just doesn't quite have the same premium experience as the more expensive mice. So that's gonna do it for our look at the Model O2 Pro, D2 Pro, and the 4K, 8K editions. Let us know what you think about them down in the comments below. And if you wanna see me and hear me and talk to me a little bit more live about these, make sure you are subscribed, hit that bell icon so you get notifications when we are going live. You can catch me using this mouse and using some other recent gear and ask me any additional questions that you have. And if you're looking for some other videos to watch, I will link to our review of the Super Light 2 as well as our most recent video.
And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so others can find it easier and consider subscribing. This is Jordan with 9to5toys.